What's going on, guys? This episode is brought to you by True Classic Tees, the best t-shirts on the market. And if you go to trueclassictees.com forward slash RBP, you get 25% off your order. I'm telling you guys, these shirts, this one especially, is my favorite. The color, the fit, the way it stays fitting like this after like an hour or so, two hours, three hours, four hours, is awesome. Very comfortable. They stay form-fitted, which is nice. They don't get all loose. And Wrinkly, I'm going to show you guys what trueclassictees.com has to offer. This is the website, and they have it all. So if you go to shop all, you can see here they have T-shirts. They got crew necks. They got collared shirts. They have long sleeve shirts. They have boxers. They literally have anything you could want in the material. They got some baseball tees here too. Nice. The material's absolutely awesome like this feels so good and the best part about it is it stays fitted properly it doesn't get all loose and gross and baggy so even if you want to wear it out to dinner if you want to wear it to a casual setting you're going to feel like you're wearing something relatively nice guys get to trueclassics.com forward slash rbp and get 25 percent off your order and get the best line of clothing you can get How's it going, everybody? We are live in Houston. I uh, came down. I drove down to see the guys. I see Hunter and Dean. I don't think drove down does it any justice. And it trailered. You hauled yourself yeah. down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trailered two bikes uh, to come down and see the boys and train with them a little bit and uh, see how they're doing for their prep. I can't even see you, Dean, because of this arm. Oh, I'm just, right just going to do this, like, yeah. And then uh, Justin came down and flew down to meet us. Yes, sir. I'm not sure why. Hey. I was, I was threatened. He was gonna <laughs> mail modeling opportunities in downtown Houston. <laughs> yeah, I needed somebody to hang out with because I'm at a different house than the <laughs> fight house. He practically I begged come. me to come. Yeah. So Ben and Dean are staying at an Airbnb a couple blocks away, and Hunter obviously has his own place. And they meet to train at the Hunter Gym, the Hunter Labrada Gym every day. <laughs> Is that what it's called, the Hunter Labrada Gym? I think it's called the Hunter Gym. We call gym. it Labrada HQ. Labrada, yeah. Labrada HQ. Headquarters, yeah. the, the gym at this point. The gym, is that is it? Yeah, we don't go anywhere else when we're here in, in town. So, yeah, see at the gym. Yeah, so I got here, and I realized you guys are crazy. Ben is, ben is running a full fight camp, like exercise bike in the room, doing cardio together, eating together. Ben's cooking meals for Dean. Right? He's a beautiful chef. How come you're not cooking your own meals? Yeah, how come you don't cook your own meals? What is this? What is this? Dude, why? Because his girlfriend at home does it. So, what is this new age bodybuilding thing where your coach cooks your meals for you? He's good, man. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stopping from He enjoys smiling, cooking so. as well. I do enjoy cooking. And, and I and I also get anxiety when people don't do shit on time. So, I'm like, fuck it. There's your meals. Eat. But you know, the rest of your clients are going to expect this now when they're prepping. If they're at the Olympia, cool. Yeah. Hunter, why aren't you staying at the house with them? I see them enough. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, obviously, you know, I live here. I have my house. Liv and I uh, just got married, so we're, you know, enjoying the newlywed prep life. Not that it's really changed because we're not psychopaths and we lived together before we got married. I've never understood that one. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so... Um, you know, it's been really cool. You know, like you said, we've been, you know, it's been all steam, full steam ahead since they've gotten here. Um, you know, I'd really like to say it's brought out the best in everyone. I know I can say that for me. It's been, you know, awesome having them here. It's turned something that's been, you know, it's f f physically miserable is unavoidable with what we do. You know, it's, yeah. you know, being a good bodybuilder is comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? But, you know, doing it by yourself, you can get, like, in a really weird, dark headspace. And, you know, just since they've been down here, like, you know, as hard as it's been, it's been fun to do with them. So, you know, it's been really cool just to vibe off each other. You know, you and Justin have been down here for a couple of days, you know, feeding into that vibe. So, you know, it's been a... Uh, it's been like a uh, dream come true. I told Ben when he got down here, I've been like an athlete all my life. I've always, you know, performed well in a, uh, you know, a coach athlete environment where, you know, it's like I, I can get shit done by myself. But, you know, like when I'm working for someone and, you know, like in, the, in this case, I very much so feel like I have like a teammate at this point. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. I'm not going to get I'm not going to shit the bed if he's not going to shit the bed. You know, we're going to get it fucking done. And then, you know, with him there, you know, he's. 
you know, five hours away from his family. I know how big of a deal that is to him. And, you know, he's, you know, not, I always make a joke. He doesn't like football, but, you know, no one likes a fat football coach yelling at you to run. Yeah. You know, he's sitting there eating fish and rice with us, doing an hour of cardio in the morning, training with us. You know, it's been, it's been a really cool environment. Definitely an iron sharpens iron environment since they've yeah. been down here. So you're doing everything with them. Not the drugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, <laughs> but those days are behind me. So yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm in it with them. It's I, I I don't know how to ask them to do more if I'm not doing it with. I don't know. I just, I haven't got to that point yet in my coaching kind of career. I still feel like I, I feel like I'm very good in the gym with with them, putting them out of them. If I'm doing it with them. And I, like I said, I haven't matured enough yet to the point where I can feel comfortable asking them, asking from them, and then going and sitting down and chilling. Yeah, I, I need to be sweating and hurting with them. I, I don't know yet how to do it otherwise. So I'm, this is how I know how to do it. Justin, do you think it's? Do you think that's the right way to do it? It's not how I would do it. <laughs> it definitely works. I would relax and then tell them what to do. But <clears throat> I do think it's fucking very commendable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess if you lead from the front, then nobody can complain. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, I'm in a different place right now. I'm here with these guys, and I want to work. I'm jealous that I'm, you know, satiated and fat. I want to be hungry and skinny and <laughs> shredded. I'm watching them go through posing rounds. I'm like, fuck. I want to yeah. do that. Yeah, Very yeah. soon, my friend. I know. I'll be blink, blink, yeah, blink and you'll be doing it. And I'll be bitching about being hungry. <laughs> Dean, how's this for you, buddy? You um, just got your pro card. You just did your like an amateur show not long ago. You got your pro card the day after. Yep. And then, or so you got your pro card, and then you did a pro show the day after and qualified for the Olympia. And now here you are six months later, and you're posing with Lee Labrada. He also and working is out with Hunter, a no name amateur in a non non MPC and IFBB organization at the beginning of the year too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're at the Olympia and you're working with a legend and a top Olympian. How does that feel? Like, what has that been like? It's crazy, mate. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, it still hasn't actually sunk in, to be fair. Like, every day we're just so on it with prep. And um, it's just, yeah, I don't think it's sunk in yet, to be fair. It's all too much. It's crazy. But I'm loving it. The days so. are hectic, and I don't think you've had time to process it. Yeah. It's just like, how do you look? What do we need to do today? Yeah. Go. On to the next day. There's brief moments where I've caught you where you're like, of an evening if we're going to chill outside and have a little, yeah. have a little smoke, then it's like a de decompress. And, yeah. But other than that, it's hectic. I saw you uh, running through some poses with Lee today. Yep. How was that? It was really good. We worked on some transitions, which... Uh, but I mean, it's Lee. It's like... <laughs> one of the greatest posers of all time. Of course. You know, and yeah. he's teaching how to pose. I know. It's crazy, right? <laughs> crazy? <laughs> like, I want him to teach me how to pose. <clears throat> you just walk in, yeah. you walk in, uh, people are like, what the fuck? This guy just got here? Yeah, I couldn't ask for more, <laughs> mate. Honestly, it's, uh, this year has been nuts, yeah. to say the least. So, what's, uh, what's the plan? <clears throat> this year, 212, next year, 212, or next yeah. year, crazy? Yeah. It, next I, year, going I think it'll still be 212. It's going to be 240 year. next year? Um, ben? <laughs> Wow, look, here's, when we started prep, Dean and I have been kind of loosely working together for, what, four years now? Yeah. But we entered a few preps in 2020, and COVID happened, so we shut a few things down, and he was getting some business set up with the gym and the plumbing and whatever he was doing. So when he called me, it was like January, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. shit, you tell it. You tell it. Yeah, I mean... You literally it, called me and said... Yeah, yeah, because the prep got shut down because of COVID. And then, what, we were 10 weeks out. We, done a, yeah, we started a 16-week prep. Yeah. We shut it down at 10 weeks out. Can I interrupt you for um, one second? Yeah. Who cut your hair today? Did Ben cut your hair? No, I'm serious. I just <laughs> no, it, it looks nice. It looks good. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I was I'm, actually curious myself. I'm asking because the beard is lined up like beautifully. So I'm just wondering, like, did the guy that cut your hair do your beard too? Or did you do your beard, do your beard by yourself? No, he didn't. It was, it's next you had to the them all yeah, that we yeah you're, you're doing the Olympia. Who cares? Barber. Who did your beard? The barber was next to the cardio. <laughs> hey, you know what? I care because he's talking. And I'm looking I'm like that beard is lined up to perfection. He's getting a little semi on and he's like, he's got a little chubby <laughs> <over here. laughs> Fucking good right now. 
I was like, hey, looks kind of well, cute. Well, I look at your fucking him. beard. It looks disgusting. He's sitting there going, he's like, Dean looks kind of cute right now. <laughs> <laughs> look at Look at this shit. It's like perfectly lined up. It's very handsome. You need a moment. There's a bedroom right here. I don't need a moment. I'm just I'm just curious if he did it by himself. That's all. I just wanted to know. He's I was his just right wanting now. to know if he did his own beard. It's not that crazy. Uh, we didn't get an answer yet. Who, who did the beard? It was, uh, Barbara did it. Yeah, yeah. Next to the gym. Now we do all, cardio. Yeah. We can, can carry also, on now. Now tell you. Now take go to the, um, the barbecue place that you just had food from. Is that right? Yeah, man. It's one stop shop. We got our cardio. The guy that uh, the guy that cut Dean's actually the guy that cuts like me, my dad, and my brother too. Sorry. Dude. And then the next door over is that barbecue joint that I brought y'all food from. I gotta move. Here. We gotta move to Houston. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right there. Done deal. <laughs> the fuck. The beard guy, the food, the gym. It's all right there. Damn. All right. Anyway, so about the Olympia. Carry no, on. I guess about your, no, your prep. Come back to the important part. <laughs> yeah. What's the hang on? Sorry. The real important part was when we first start, he called me and said. Let's just do a show this year. Yeah. And what did you weigh? My memory's turned, dude. I remember. He was 216. <laughs> Why'd you ask him if you already knew? Because I wanted him to just fucking tell. Well, he wants you to tell. Okay, he was 216. No, no, I couldn't remember. He was 216. Okay. <clears throat> so this wasn't off the back of an off season. No, no. This it wasn't. Was, um... And I'm like, so I'm not getting too far ahead of myself with, because we've got the Olympia to do. Your phone's on. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. What the fuck's wrong with you? It's not amateur hour. Oh, shit. Shit. Shop if I sell. Yeah, we're literally <laughs> <watching. laughs> <laughs> 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 um, So he started prep at 216. Yeah. Um, so he basically just recomped and, and improved from there. But that's why I'm excited because I'm like, look, this next, we've been chatting about next year. Okay, have a break and then we'll line you up, feel you like work on some things. and Well, and. If I'm allowed to say, he wasn't really doing, this is kind of, a lot of it is genetic. He wasn't doing everything to a T. Well, the, way, the way you wanted it done, right? Uh, like, were you, were you 100%? Were you being lazy? No, no, I don't mean that. I mean, because since he's been here, he told me himself that he's learned quite a bit yeah, or a more than sure. he could be doing. Um, a lot of it is I was still plumbing and running the gym. Yeah. And when you're doing that, you can't, like, look how busy, where would I fit that in in the days that we've been, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, where with all the you, posing and everything, yeah, yeah. But in reality, you've got to do that, and it's difficult to balance everything out. And towards the end, <clears throat> I was trying to put more time into bodybuilding, and everything else was just fucked, basically. Do you know what I mean? Like, so so it wasn't I had like to make the switch, and I had to make the move, and that's why it was a good idea to do this with Ben. So it wasn't a matter of you not knowing what to do or no, not. No. You just didn't have no, the time. Not enough hours in the day. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, at one point, I was doing cardio at like one a.m. What was it like stepping on the Arnold stage? It was. was a, it was actually a great experience, uh, regardless to my placing at the Arnold's. Um, it was a bit frustrating that it got kind of changed like last minute. With the Arnolds and not mm -hmm. being the Arnolds, and it was kind yeah, of like yeah. now it's called something sports festival. Lost a little there. bit of the prestige. Went. But uh, no, it was still good, and we learned a lot from what happened there as well. So <clears throat> I think it's going to bring a better package for the Olympia. So it was actually great. Yeah. You've been dieting for how long now? Since January. Damn. Dude, it's those crazy years that can really make you, though. You know, I've talked with Ben about it a couple times now. You know, like my rookie season, yeah. I started dieting like the second week of January for what was supposed to be the New York Pro in May. Yeah. And I ended up doing Tampa in August. That's right. And, you know, I spent the whole year, you know, like very much so locked in and, you know, like yo-yoing in and out of like that final, you know, five-week shape like three times as it got mm -hmm. pushed back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I honestly don't know if I would have been – you know, if I, New York would have just happened, I don't know if I would have won my debut because, you know, like I got so much better as the year went on. And, you know, like you watch Dean, you know, he started the year, you know, what I'm assuming was a way softer 216 than right now because that's right around where you're at right now. And, you know, he just continually got better and better and better. And, you know, as long as you can stay locked in, it's a testament to him. He stayed locked in. Yeah. You know, look what's happened in a year. You know, like people say, you know, like six months or eight months of focus can change your life. He's, <laughs> he's living that right now. It's cool yeah. to see. But that's what I find challenging because most guys will do a show and then they need to relax. 
So most guys, guys don't end up on the Olympia stage in, in one year. That's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> yeah. the guys, the guys who Built can, different. Yeah, the guys who can stay locked in is it's impressive. So in saying that, though, you've had the entire year off. Mm-hmm. So how is that? How do you feel going into the Olympia with not having that time to get sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper, like previous shows to kind of get warmed up? So in my case, I think it was all positive, no negative from the standpoint that, you know, last year I was able to finish the O. Um, I was able to, you know, truly give my body time. I was able to truly give my mind time because, you know, last year was still a two show year. We had to do Chicago and then the Olympia. So, you know, it was, you know, eight months worth of dieting by the time it was all said and done. So, you know, like to go into the first time I've really had longer than three or four months in a surplus when I went, since I went pro, Mm -hmm. you know, like fresh bodied, fresh minded, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, what we did this off season was a testament to that. You know, we yeah. very much so, unless something really, really, really weird or wonky happens, I'm going to be at least 10 pounds heavier than I was last Olympia in significantly better shape. So, sure. you know, I, it, my level, you can't ask for more than that. That's pretty unheard of. So, you know, as far as, you know, not having to do another show, it, you know, like locked me in, allowed me to make the changes that I think I needed to make to, you know, move up, move up that ladder more. Yeah. And then, you know, it allowed me to start this prep, you know, like mentally fresh, not like, oh, here we go again. Because, you know, as much as I'd like to say, oh, I'm hardcore and this, that, and other, you know, there's very much so an element of, all right, let's do this again, you know, whenever you're having to do a show to qualify and then, you know, you're having to do the do the Olympia prep too. So, yeah. you know, starting it mentally fresh was a big one for me too. So you put on about, what well, we were on stage last year? 253? Last year's stage was 252, 253? 253. Yeah. So you think you put on 10 pounds, but last year Olympia, and I wasn't at the show, but there were people that said they want to see you sharper. Absolutely. So... I'm curious what you think, because we haven't really talked about this at all. If you were at your absolute best last year on stage, what do you think your weight would have been? <laughs> like, if you were as sharp as you wanted. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would probably say 246, 247. So are you saying 10 pounds from that, 10 pounds from that 246, or are you saying, yeah? Yeah. I'd say if I, if I were a betting man, I'd say we're going to put me on stage somewhere between 260 and 262. Okay. If, so, I, if I had to throw a number out there, yeah. really and truly, the point that we're at and, you know, the size that I was able to add this off season, I really couldn't care less about the number. Well, of course. It's, you know, yeah. priority one, two, three, four, and five is coming in in shape, and we're taking the steps that we need to yeah. do to do that. Yeah, yeah. So the lineup is far deeper this year. Have you – do you care? Have you looked? Have you cr- – critiqued other physiques do you give a shit or are you like i already know what i got to do i already know who i am so my thing and i've always been pretty decent about this is i know that i can't do better than my absolute best and that's not like a cheesy cop out of you know like oh it's yeah you know gonna happen I, i've been training to win since last year's olympia since i walked out of stage i'm gonna be devastated if i don't okay that being said you know i know that there is no possible way to be better than my best and i kept my peace of mind this whole off season and you know throughout this prep that i've taken you know every step to do it and i'm on track to be way better than i was last year so you know if i'm able to frame it like that i'm able to keep myself pretty centered um you know i make a joke with ben i'll joke with dean i'll joke with Liv. you know those really close to me you know like i'm not gonna sit here and say that lineup isn't immense yeah you know, I joke around, and, you know, it's like, yeah, I could win, or I could get 12th this year. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's one of those lineups. And, you know, there's so many unknowns. There's a lot of really good guys I haven't stood next to. So, you know, as much as, you know, I'd like to sit here and be like, oh, I think I'll finish here, there, there, I'm really just no, about I, doing what I need to do. No, and I and I know that. I don't I don't expect you to, to tell me, like, where you're going to place. That kind of question is irrelevant. It's more more what I'm asking is, because of the age of social media, you see people update every day, every week. You see a new update. Does Hunter care about that? Do you look at that? Do you say, oh, this guy's new update looks like this, or that guy's new update looks like this, or are you just not? It just rolls off your back. I've been doing it for so long that I know it's just everyone's highlight reel. That's right. 
So, you know, it's cool to see. You know, it's really way, it's way more one of those things. Like, I'll see, you know, like, I'll see Samson's new video. And be like, oh, that's, like, he looks fucking cool. That's cool. Yeah. And, you know, like, I have no clue what he looks like in real life, but that's a really cool reel. And, you know, like, that, that's kind of what I get for most of it. It's like, I know what I'm posting is highlight reels. I'm not posting, oh, man, I look like dog shit. Let me put this on Instagram, <laughs> you know. No one, no one's like that. So you got to take everything you see with a grain of salt. And that's, you know, for the people that aren't, you know, you're going to end up on Goob sometime soon, you know, because there's a lot of people that really, you know, take their photos <laughs> to the next level, yeah. and I'll leave it at that. But, you know, so you got to take everything you see with a grain of salt. Yeah, it's a good attitude. Justin, yeah. do you think you'd be able to do that in a field of 35 great? It's funny, Hunter said this Hunter said this early, earlier we were talking. There's like 20 guys. Over are, half the field's going to finish last. Are not going to place. Yeah, oh, yeah, we talked about that. There are a lot of yeah. very good bodybuilders that are going to get tied for last place. Do you think, you know, you're coming up now and you're going to, do you think you'd be able to take it with this kind of stride? I think, I personally think it's the best approach for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd like to think that in that, in that place, I would have the ability to, like you said, put fucking blinders on, not pay attention, just worry about yourself. But you know me, that's kind of how I am, dude. Would it drive you harder though? Like when you see that, let's say you saw your competition, like you competed against Carlos and you competed against like yeah. some other guys. Dude, when I seen these guys. Like it, does that you, make you, do you look at that and go, I better fucking do my cardio harder or I better eat less food what? or I do it better. Or are you just like, I know what I'm doing. I got what I, I you got. You know what? I have a plan. I'm following that plan. And I, I put faith in my coach, yeah. Matt. Yeah. And I feel like as long as I'm doing everything he tells me to do and I know that I'm taking the boxes, I feel confident in myself. Yeah. It's really all you can do, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think some people do get, I think you can throw people off. I think you can get caught trying to chase things and veer off your path by trying to play someone else's game. I think it's good to you know? view it like, you know, you get on Instagram and you take it as like, you know, some, you know, I hate the word motivation. I'm a big discipline over a motivation person, but you know, it's like, Okay, you know, uh, Ian, Ian's uh, starving and dying, and he looks really cool, and he's getting his shit done. Or, you know, okay, Samson's, you know, you know, get, it, it's, you know you're able to kind of, like, vibe off it, especially because, you know, it's like, you know, they're, they're your peers. They're people yeah. that I know. I know what they're, you know, dealing with. I know how they're feeling, and I know they're getting it done. So that, that can be, you know, motivating in a sense, not, you know, like, intimidating, I guess. And that's another, you know, try to take away from it. Yeah, I don't think. I'm trying to think back to when I competed. I wouldn't wasn't I wouldn't say I was intimidated, but I used to think about my competition when I was lifting. For sure. So I don't know if that's that's kind of more what I mean. I don't mean like you saw somebody's photos and you're like crumble. You're, like, you're oh. like Lou Fregman, yeah. Arnold, Arnold, <laughs> Arnold. Arnold. <laughs> that, oh, I beat him. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I want to beat him. I might not have been saying it out loud, but I was saying it in my head. I was. Good I was. Right. That was good. Yeah. I, I was I've always done that in the past. Yeah, the past. dude. Yeah, of course, man. I think like Hunter said, it's it it is motivating. And if you don't look at that and don't see your peers, your competition working their ass off, and it doesn't light a fire on you, then I don't think you have the competitive spirit. I think that's just part There's of it. There's a big difference, too, about your mentality, like when you're in the fire in the gym versus, mm -hmm. like, you know, being in control and a master of your mind outside of the gym. Yeah, of course. You know, course, I yeah. feel like you need to have the ability to switch it off to be able to do this at a high level consistently. No, 100%, because if, yeah. if you're thinking about it, outside the gym and, and dwelling on it it's going to cripple you to be a detriment yeah yeah so you said you you did that before what did you mean yeah, i've done that in the past can you explain just exactly what you said mate is there somebody that beat you before or just somebody you knew was going to do the show or like what was yeah, the scenario just, oh it was just like it, not this year i haven't done it this year at all yeah. um yeah just flicking through instagram on this guy's doing my show and just thinking, yeah i'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking for, smoke this dude for me it was somebody yeah. who for, <laughs> yeah. for me it was yeah. someone who beat me in the past and yeah. I would be like, okay, I'm doing a show sense. against that guy again. I'm like, fuck. I gotta fucking beat him this time. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We got retribution because back in 17, you got beat. Mm -hmm. I know you got beat at the Arnold, but you got beat in 17 by Kamal. So uh, we're coming for Kamal's head. Fuck Kamal. Kamal, eh? Kamal. It's a I big got one. smoked in uh, that show anyway. <laughs> by a lot of people. <laughs> don't say that. They don't know that. Kamal beat him. <laughs> That's it. That's what we care about. He's been former Mr. Olympic. SJT beat Kamal as well. You know what? He That's a, that Sean's show. dead. He didn't win that so show. So good. If you're going to lose to somebody, Kamal is not, not a bad one not to lose Not a bad to. one to lose handy. to. He's yeah. a handy bodybuilder. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he's all right. He's got as well. Don't know how he's doing. Don't say that. He was, he was yeah. at his prime when he beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he still looks like he's in his prime. Like he's 52. Well. He's like frozen in time. Mm -hmm. Seriously, eh? Um, 
Hunter, do you have any people talk about rivalries? Do you have rivalries that you think about at all? Or you just let the public do that? Man, my experience has been that there is not a rivalry that is, you know, carried on or purported in bodybuilding right now that has any actual merit to it. I don't think I agree with you. I'm saying for me. Oh, for you. Yeah, for me. Okay. You know, um, people try to create a lot of hype between me and Nick. People try and, you know, create a lot of hype between me and, you know, the other aesthetic bodybuilders. You know, Brazilian fans are rabid, you know, so a lot of, like, Rafa comparisons. You know, I think Rafa's the man. I like him a lot as a person. But, uh, <clears throat> I, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm friendly with Nick. We talk pretty regularly. Oh. Like, it's just one of those things, like, we were talking about this the other day. I feel like the rivalries, you know, that interest me or, you know, like the, uh, the, the headbutting that interests me are ones that are born from, you know, actual competition, you know, like greatness colliding, if you will. I, I use that, like, statement when we're talking about because, like, people are like, oh, there's not any rivalries, like, you know, Jay and Phil or Jay and Ronnie or, uh, you know, Kai and Phil. And I was like, yeah, because they were going head to head as number one and two in the world, you know, like neck and neck for forever. So, yeah, but there's two things. Under, I don't, when I say rivalry, I don't mean negative. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't mean it has to be beef. I just mean rivalries and, like, this is a tight competition. So, and when you say greatness colliding, I think of you and Nick. I'm like, okay, well, these, these two, because I think somebody asked a question in the Q&A that I put up, and they said, who do you think is going to be the face of bodybuilding in the coming years? And I don't think there's going to be one person. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a group, and it's going to be you and Nick and Ian, and I think you guys are all not that far apart. You know what I mean? Uh, Derek, yep. you know, these guys are all kind of fit into the mix, and you guys are all pretty close. And... That's more what I mean by rivalry, and that's what you mean by greatness colliding is you guys are going to be the top five mm -hmm. for the next 10 years or whatever it is, five years. So that's – you don't think about that. Like, you don't think, I want to make sure I stay ahead of this guy or stay ahead of that guy. You don't – that doesn't enter. That no, right. I'm not thinking about I want to stay ahead of this guy or I want to stay ahead of that guy. I'm thinking about eating up the three spots that were ahead of me last year regardless of who's in them. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. That's something Dean and I have spoken about this year was about beating his, sorry, about beating his look. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I mean, that's what we did this year, like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. I was going through a video from where him and Lee were posing earlier. And I said, man, I think this beats. That little string you all put together is gnarly. Yeah, that, that spread into a, I want to post yeah, I'm that. I'm excited for people to see but that. We, we, we now down as Portugal, the, the win, as his Best look, mm -hmm. definitely, period. Definitely. So the goal was let's beat the Portugal look because we're confident that if we beat the Portugal look, that I mean that's all we can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said to him, I don't care whether that might be top five, it might be five, six to tenth, it might be eleventh to fifteenth. I don't care as long as we beat that look. That's mm -hmm. that's the only priority right now. I want to touch on that what you guys were talking about earlier because people watching probably don't know. So this is one of the benefits of having a training camp, if that's what you want to call it. There's more eyeballs and more input. So yesterday, these guys, uh, Dean and Hunter, are posing every day, like two or three times a day. So we were all we were watching, and Ben lets us give our input, and these guys are gracious enough to accept as well. So me and Justin were kind of giving a little bit of input here and there, and uh, we were talking to Dean about doing his transitions from uh, one post to the next. And today, he sat... He worked with Lee on transitions, and he's transitioned from uh, side tricep to back lat, or his back lat to side tricep. His back lat spread into a side so tricep. Into, into the ab uh, Into the ab thigh. Yeah. Yeah. So for people watching, that probably doesn't sound like anything important, but those transitions and the way you move from one to the next is what keeps you. You put a video on. of yeah. how he was doing it next to that way, and oh, yeah. you people yeah. would see That's how big of a difference And, and this is. is what I was saying. I've, I've said it a couple of times, and controversially so, about good bodybuilders moving into at the Olympia and you know what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. And I'm like, there's a difference between having a great physique and presenting a great physique. And that's the, there's a lot of guys that are new to the Olympia, especially in the open, that are not going to be as polished as they necessarily need to be for their physique to place them where they should necessarily. I know what you mean. They're, they're leaving some stones. Well, you're not going to say it, but I'll, I'll say it. So, 
the, the first example that comes to mind is somebody like Crizzo. When I look at somebody like Crizzo, he's got a, a good physique, he's got some great body parts. But at the Olympia, things like not being in condition will expose him. And then things like transitions and the way you present on stage and the way you move from pose to pose will also expose him. And I'm not just picking on him. There are other newer guys that are coming in sure. that have the same, same issue because it's weird that we, we've, you know, we do a lot of breakdowns on pro shows. And we've been, I've been seeing that more this year where guys are not presenting as well as they should or their poses are a little bit Definitely different, strange. Yeah, so I don't know if it's just because these guys are new to the IFBB <laughs> or they're new to bodybuilding or... I think people are putting so much time into just getting massive and yeah. not, you know, that, Taking like the time. Say, that polished, like thinking about like the artistic not doing all the facets of bodybuilding yeah. and they're not watching enough lee labrata posing videos well, listen honestly on youtube i've been here for a week and a half and just in the week and a half i've been watching you three you two pose there's just it, every time you guys pose somebody will fix a hand position a foot position an elbow and the, the posing has gotten better for the last week and a half there's so much nuance to posing that yeah. not a lot of and people the posing the endurance it, well, that's, that's for sure. That's one thing. No, no, but when people, uh, when people practice their posing, they generally think, I just want to be able to hold my pose. Yeah. But with the, the endurance that you've been yeah. putting them through, yeah. there's little adjustments you make like every day. You know, like yesterday, you were like, we were talking to Hunter, and we're like, you know, let's put your hands a little higher on the lat spread. Which is, re- feels ridiculous, me talking to the fourth best in the world. But you know Saying what? something like that, but not at all. He, you know, but that's and I, I appreciate it. But it's that's just, a testament to him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's kind of like when Samson came down and I had a, did a back workout with him. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this guy's potentially top ten in the world, right? And he's taking back cues from me. Yeah, but that's a testament to being a good bodybuilder is having an open mind. I truly believe it. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone should have an open mind when it comes to training, posing, presentation. Yeah, for it. I mean, should we have Justin, mind about your Justin, just I stop knew- trying to correct everybody's form every time. They fucking do something. I get I get hammered by this guy. This guy's the worst. Every time we train. <laughs> this guy's the worst training partner in the world. I don't say anything about his form, and he picks part my form, and then he says, uh, tells me, you just always tell me I'm doing shit wrong. I'm like, I've spent this whole workout. <laughs> you b- my mouth shit. Me, tell me I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> I didn't correct your form once. <laughs> he told me to hurry the fuck up and told me I was boring. Well, I heard, yeah. told you to hurry up. I did. And last night we were moving fast. We did not move fast. Ben, did we move fast? I've seen him move faster, but it was Okay, faster. but that's not, of course we've seen him move faster. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was way quicker than I would have moved. For I sure. literally lost my pump because you were moving so slow. <laughs> That's because you're old and... No, and no, it's because he was talking between every set. <laughs> you're natural you get now. a uh, hostile uh, aerobics instructor outfit made for this okay. guy for like this. I'm in the wrong... I'm, you know, Dean's the only one I got on my side here. Me Why? Because me and Dean trained together and he liked our training session. Or at least he lied to me and told me he was good. He, he was fucking bullshit. You, you, you just signed him. What do you think he's going to say? Yeah. You cut his Loved chest. it. Like, oh, hey, thanks for bringing me on. That training session was total shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> you didn't lie to me, did you? No. See? Oh, yeah. That's you see twice. Him look, see him look to the left That's twice season. now. No. You lied to him. <laughs> I, I had a great workout last night, actually. I had a shit workout. I did. Not because of you. I <laughs> okay, just, yeah, it's sure. been a long day. We had a good leg workout. We had a great leg great, workout. Yeah, leg workout was fucking yeah, awesome. I can't walk. But. This is the thing. We, we talked about this in our, in our vlog. We always, listen, we always fight about training and how they train slow and they train this. They train. We had a leg workout. We all fucking train the same. It's just when you're talking, it's different. Yeah. I mean, you, you rest your sets a bit. That's a, such an asshole. That's all. <laughs> I don't need to do a four second negative on my every fucking rep. I don't. That's no, not, no, you don't. That's not you perfect don't. training. That's just your style. Of I training. wasn't doing a four second negative. Yes, you were. On the leg press. What do you think about his leg press? Fucking leave me out of this. <laughs> You're the one I was trying to recover. Well, you know what? <laughs> the leg press is on video. So we'll let the people hey, wait, decide. Okay, the leg press was a little quick. See, thank you. <laughs> What's not? It was a little rushed. It was rushed <laughs> compared, compared to compared you guys. to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't right. want to do a three second negative or four second negative on anybody. Okay, and we don't want to rush between fucking exercises. Or yeah, sets. there you go. Well, fuck you guys. Then. Don't <laughs> yeah, go home. Yeah, I'm going. Why don't you pack your shit up I'm and go? Fuck it. <laughs> Podcast is over. <laughs> fuck it. Fuck that's this. it. Uh-huh. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no, it. Uh, yeah. To be honest, it really was not all that different at all. You do like to go a little bit faster from exercise to exercise. You'll implement a few more, like, feeder reps. I literally, listen, honestly, I literally lose focus. Like, if, yeah. if, it, if this workouts take too long, if there's too much rest between sets, I'm just like, 
Mm-hmm. This motherfucker will fall asleep on the spot. Yeah, oh, shit. yeah it's no. like I can't do. Like, can we just get on with it? Like, just get on with it. So <laughs> fucking around. That's the energy he brings to the session. <laughs> as I'm just coming, get as I'm prepping it. for my top, so he's like, God, just fucking get on with it. <laughs> well, you're gonna get psychologically <laughs> set. Like, psychologically. Yeah, dude, quit. you're getting in my fucking head, man. God. Anyway, anyway, it was a good. We had a good. Yeah, we had a good workout. I'm yeah. sore as shit. Yeah, my legs are fucked. Um, Is that up yet? You huh? post it? No, Matt's taking his time over nah, there. Nah, what the fuck, man? Come on. <laughs> post that yeah, where's the leg? Sitting over there on Instagram, oh. look. You have work to do, man. Uh, let's do some questions, just for the fuck of it. We get relaxed a little bit. Um, I want Hunter to answer this. Oh, loud. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Hit me. Where would Fuad's best look place at this year's Olympia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Okay, what would you had Dean. What, Dean, what Dean will fucking pump you first. up. Yeah, yeah. Dean, you answer it. Yeah, it's like the second. Yeah. It's like second. second. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say your best look is ever? In this lineup, probably the 15 would be the most competitive, but I think. Orlando, 15? Yeah, yeah. but I think 11 might have been the best. I, uh, if you have to say 15th or whatever, I'm like, that's okay. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, yeah. you need to show me a picture of you in 2011 real quick. Okay. Hit me with it. I gotta find one. The resolution is a bit ropey. <laughs> it's been filtered to fuck. It's, it's Nokia, f- Nokia flip phone. Yeah. Pass, po- pass through seven generations. It was a Polaroid, but you'll you know get an idea. Weight. It's a Polaroid. <laughs> Do you know what this isn't was? my weight in uh, that show, 248 maybe? Who'd you work with for that one? Honey. Uh. That's a side chest. Oh, you can't see it from there. Jesus Christ. That's a two. Yeah. Justin's just waiting for the like, 20th so he can yeah, laugh. Like, Come on, dude. <laughs> Tell him he's getting last. <laughs> I'm just like, how do I be polite? I have to. How do I be honest? Dude, I mean, this, this lineup is fucking incredible. I, uh, listen, Paul did yeah, this with me. Yeah, Paul did this with me on the. Because, you know, Paul's a judge. So we asked Paul. And Paul was like, I, I love you, man, but you'd be like 17th. I was like, okay. <laughs> so nice. I mean, think about the. I wasn't even think about insul- the sixteen guys that'd be ahead of you. Listen, I, I wasn't. Even, I wasn't even insulted. I yeah. was like, it's right, <laughs> but hey, not even that. Take take. Wait, hold Dexter. on, hold on. I take Dexter. Gotta, Hunter's what is answer. Dexter fooling? You take a great. Not when you well, you weren't a great. No, no, Dexter's right. a great, but mm-hmm. I'm saying, do the same question with Dennis Wolf. Do the same question with Dexter. I'm still at a loss. I don't fucking know. No, I think Dexter mm-hmm. in this lineup. Okay, but he still could have been. It's still, it's still a variance. There's still a wide range on that. Not really. Dexter was always in the top five or six. I still think he would be in the top five or six. But it wouldn't, be, it, would, it wouldn't be unheard of to have him closer to the six than the two. It depends who else is there. But in, in this lineup? That's what I mean, in this lineup. I st- no. He could have been third. could be second. He could be second. Second primetime Dex. I think I'd say best. second. Yeah. I'd say second primetime Dex. Yeah. Still there, still working. But it's still t- yeah. tricky. Not For someone of Dex's caliber, it's still not a cinch. I'm I think sick. prime time Dex is top four minimum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. That's what I'm saying, but that's, yeah, that's but also prime time Dex is Mr. Olympia. And that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking a former Mr. Olympia, and no, he still gets a little. No, no, he's not. The best Dexter ever is not 2008. Okay, I'm saying he's a former yeah. Mr. Olympia, and I'm still saying he's still getting like thrown in uh, somewhere in the top four. All I'm, his say, best all, look. all I'm saying is Dexter at the Olympia was always top four, and he'd still be top four. So I don't think there would be any, like, he wouldn't be pushed back, in my, in my opinion. But so you, you're not going to gonna say 12 to 14. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's what I put myself. So fuck you, Justin. Hey, dude. <laughs> fuck. Uh, you said you'd get last. <laughs> when, no. This is the question. Who do you think will be the face of bodybuilding in the next five years? Do you think, Justin, do you think there'll be a face? Do you think there'll be one guy, like a Ronnie or a Jay? I think right now it's really hard to say there's going to be one particular face. I mean, who would it be if we had to pick one? You can't even. There's too many guys that are close. Who? Seba, face of bodybuilding. I, I was about to say, I think, I, think the days of, <laughs> I think the days of a one person being the face of, especially with Instagram being what it is, like you said, I think it's more a collective, like three, four yeah. different guys having different social media pools. And it's not just 
who's the best on stage anymore. I don't know about that. Like when Ronnie was, it was when Ronnie was winning, no, it was think, only about what he looked like on stage, really. Yeah, but I still think if it's it depends on the dominance. That's the difference. Like right now, the face of bodybuilding is Rami. Right? Would you agree? No. 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 Who do you think the face of bodybuilding is? You're I'm younger. First one. Who's the first person you think about when you think of bodybuilding? Very first. That's it. At the moment, there isn't one. That's yeah. Cool. No. I don't. I don't necessarily think of Rami. I don't think he like. But do we not think Rami because Rami's popular overseas and not here, or do we just not think Rami because he's not? I think Rami. I think Rami is in the discussion, but then I also think so is Nick, so is Hunter. Yeah. So sure. it, like, I I would say Huddy less so out of that top five. But the the common theme is you guys are. Describing, yeah, the thing about the culture is the Huddy is. Yeah. Mainstream famous in Iran, and so is you know Rami. That's what I'm saying. You guys, you guys yeah. are describing people. You guys are describing the two guys that aren't from this side of the world and saying, "Well, they're not popular." No, I didn't say he's not popular. Or they're not the faces, but but, over, but that can over. still be true. They can be popular and not the face of bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. if you're popular and you're far better than everybody else, you're the face of bodybuilding. That's why Phil was the face of bodybuilding. That's why Jay was the face of bodybuilding. That's why Ronnie was the face of bodybuilding. Because they were yeah. But do we have any? Phil and Jay and Ronnie were also on the road like twenty, thirty weekends a year, meeting everyone, being the face of bodybuilding, representing the IFPB, representing the division. You know, yeah. Because now everyone does that via Instagram. No, I still think you have to get out and meet people. No, I know, but I'm saying a lot of people think they they do they can just operate from Instagram and cover that base. So you think the face of bodybuilding? You, th- you, don't, you don't think there's ever going to be another guy that's the guy? I don't think so. I do. Not unless you get someone who completely dominates for years. That's what I just said. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think you're going to have anyone that dominates until, for until six that years happens, in a row. Until that happens, I don't think you've got a face. Yeah, we don't see them now anyway because with the current crop, until somebody like, you know, Phil came out of nowhere. Yeah. There was no Phil, and all of a sudden three years later there was a Phil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So unless somebody comes out of nowhere... The current crop are all very close. And I think they're all very competitive with, with one another. Yeah. It's a tight line. Like yeah. said, it was almost like you had Phil and then the rest. And I don't feel... Yeah. And Ronnie and then the rest. And I don't feel that's the case. In these times. Well, now you have... Do you think it's Rami and the rest? That's how most people see it. They do? Maybe I don't... I think... I don't listen so much in the noise, so I don't see Well, it, it is just noise. It's not... Nobody's saying it's fact, but... When you look at, if you watch any bodybuilding shows and any breakdowns and any predictions. That's what I mean. I don't see any. I don't watch I know. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you watch any breakdowns or predictions or whatever, Rami is usually the favorite. Like pretty much by everybody. Yeah. Kind of unanimously. Mean, I'm not saying that doesn't mean he can't be beaten. But I'm saying when people are doing predictions now, they're, they're putting Rami in first and then the rest is all mixed up. Huh. So. I don't know if that's an incorrect opinion to have. I mean. He's last year's champ. He yeah. looks gigantic. He's, putting He's coming in, you know, lean yeah. enough. So yeah. uh, there's no reason to doubt him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's a, I'm saying it's a valid. If he wins this year, he starts to separate himself from the pack, I think, in terms of a legacy. Three in a row is starting to move that way. But I wonder to myself now that you brought it up is, is the fact that he's not traveling as much as he should be, like Hunter said. Is that ever going to keep him from being the face of a hostile athlete? Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah, you have to travel. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, I had to, yeah, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> it's funny. Um, I don't know. No, but seriously, if he's not traveling, uh, I'm asking if he's not traveling and he's not. I think that out meeting people, can he still be the face of bodybuilding? Yeah. Via Instagram or social That's media. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's a different game right you now. You think that? Because I know you like to travel and meet people and do all that. Yeah, so, you know, not everyone does. I personally, you know, do really enjoy traveling, meeting people, you know, especially in the off-season. I like seeing places. It's fun. Um, 
for me, and, you know, this could be because, you know, like I grew up in the house that I did around, you know, a pro from yesteryear, you know, a good, a r- incredible pro from yesteryear. But, you know, like I got, you know, like growing up, you know, it's like it's not just enough to be a good bodybuilder. You know, like if you truly care about the sport, if you truly, you know, like want to be great at it, you have to, you know, champion it and be an ambassador for it too. And, you know, in this day and age, I believe you can do that from social media. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I really feel like you putting yourself out there and, you know, traveling and meeting people, you know, shows a certain level of care, a degree of care, yeah. you know. And one of, Yeah, one of the things I, I don't think I realized was I didn't realize it until we did Orlando this year mm-hmm. is a ripple effect. I think that's why Jay is Jay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? You can never meet. You can never meet all your fans. Right. Yeah. But I think when you meet one person and he has a good you have a good impact on that person. Then he's like, hey, he tells his buddy, hey, I met so and so, and he was. Well, really, think about yeah. you know doing he was really fucking nice. He was really he took the time and talked to me. You know, do twenty appearances yeah. a year for ten years straight, and each one of those appearances, you shake five hundred people's hands. Mm-hmm. Done in the way that Jay does it, you know, like taking those 30, 45 seconds really of making you feel like he cares, you know. Yeah. Yeah. People never forget that. They tell their friends about it. Yeah. Like it leaves them feeling good. It makes a difference. And I don't believe you can get that from Instagram. No. And Unless you're like sitting that. there going back and forth with people on DMs and none of us at this level are doing that. No. And that's, that's what I was trying to get at. And I didn't, I don't think I realized that in my own pro career because just that ripple effect. I never thought of that. I'm like, okay, I'm meeting people at an expo. I forgot that they're going to go home and tell their family member, their friend. They're going to talk to their buddies at the gym. I met Hunter. He was fucking cool. He talked to me for 10 minutes. It's it's also about like every time we did those expos, there would be 100 Instagram posts tagging us and them talking about their experience. Yeah. So that got out to hundreds and thousands of people. Ripple effect as well. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, yeah. So get your ass out there, Dean. Start meeting people. (laughs) (laughs) I'm on it. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I can't find any good ones here. Does coming to Houston make you want to move to Texas more? Yes. Yeah, I'd say so. Definitely. Me, me and Hunter, me and Hunter, me and <laughs> Justin have been talking about moving, to, especially after shooting guns. Yeah, I was just talking yeah, about that. That was a good time. That got me. Yeah, that was fun. This guy's oh, a what? head hunter. <laughs> a a fucking assassin. Yeah, that was <laughs> impressive. Yeah, Justin was the worst that day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> just Handicapped. Just <laughs> <laughs> he smoked no, you. I was feeling <laughs> Thank fine. Thank you, Dave. I was yeah. feeling fine until <laughs> it got, once it got competitive, I fell apart. Yeah, he crumbled. <laughs> <laughs> I, fell, I fell apart. I got all fucking nervous, and I was shooting all over the place. Yeah. It was fun, though. That was a lot of fun. I saw yeah. the spread on his headshot in the first one. Yeah. yeah. No. Right. Tight. We shot. Got We shot. Tell what guns did we shoot? Um, shot a bunch of different Glocks when we were shooting the handguns, and then the uh, AR. Y'all shot a uh, just a fourteen and a half inch AR mm-hmm. with a uh, Vortex one to six on it, so just a scope, a magnified scope. Mm-hmm. How often do you go out there? Um, I was pretty. I get out there pretty consistently every off day. Typically, that's what I'll. Yeah. You know, like in the off season, I'd wake up, have breakfast, go out there, shoot. Right now, I'll wake up, do cardio. You know, go home, eat breakfast, grab my shit, and head out there for a couple hours. But um, you know, in the off season, it's something I really enjoy doing. And then you know, right now, it's one of those. You know, you saw how it was when we're out there. We're out there. We're on our feet. We're moving around. You're not thinking about how Forget, starving you yeah, are. It's about it. good yeah. off day activity for sure. Well, I've been here for a week and a half. That's the best mood I've seen you in. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a great time. Yeah. Happy to be out there. Yeah, it was a good time. I don't know. I could have spent hours out there. Oh yeah, definitely. Just fucking shooting guns. It mm-hmm. seems I, so stupid. I could have smoked you on those challenges <laughs> all day and never gotten bored of it. You're such an asshole. <laughs> you don't gloat at all either, I noticed. I'm actually very humble, and you know that about me. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, it seems so, I don't know, it seems kind of stupid when you say it. Okay, I'm going to go shoot a target for three hours. Oh, it's fucking blast, man. But when you're, up, when you're out there, I'm like, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. I didn't want to leave. Especially yeah. with, with all of us together, void of... I could, I, here, but I honestly could have done that by myself. I you go by yourself? Go oh, most of the time I'm out there by myself, yeah. yeah. I think it would almost be almost peaceful. To well, go you'd, you'd be less stre- less stress on you. Stop putting the fucking trigger. <laughs> no, but seriously, there's like, a, do you think that or no? 
Is there something? I, like, especially when it's just not like balls hot because we're in yeah. Houston. You know, like when you go out there and it's like a nice sunny day. Like, yeah, it's. I'll go out there and take my time. I'll be out there for yeah. three hours. I'll take a meal. Like, just kind of enjoy the day. Be out in the sun. Mm-hmm. It's relaxing to me for sure. I will say I had the second best time on the three targets though. What three targets? The three targets we did. They timed it. He did. He yeah, shot, the timer. Oh, the black, yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. shot like two oh six, and I got like three yeah, four three. He's very fast. And you were like six seconds. <laughs> So you, that's what you said. That's the third time I've heard that story since yesterday. No, that's not true. Yes, it is. Second, I said it yesterday because he was. You, but you know what? You're not. Yesterday. You know what you're not telling about that. What? It took you four tries to get there. <laughs> the first two times you didn't hit the target once. He was doing fetus sets. He went pew pew pew, and then looks at us. And goes, did I hit any of them? <laughs> and we said no. <laughs> I, hit first, I hit the first one. I hit the first one. The second time, you didn't hit any. No, no, of them. the first time, I, I hit the first He looks back at Hunter and goes, Did I hit him? Yes. Nope. No. <laughs> I'll get better. I'm going to keep going back. Keep going back. Smacking him with the AR, though. You picked that up real <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah, I had that. That's easy. Oh. It feels easy, though, that one, because it's like the, the target's It there. is. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it was a fucking blast. It though. was really fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. No, I'll be honest. At the end of that day, you were pretty proficient. Uh, Maybe proficient is the wrong word. Yeah, <laughs> proficient is the wrong word. <laughs> who made? You know what? Before we move on, I don't know what it is. I think I, I like everything about Texas. It's killer, dude. Everything. Everybody drives a big ass. Not truck. much. Not to like that barbecue is really good. The state. barbecue, you yeah, brought us greatest ca- greatest country in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, the food. Yeah, it's awesome. The trucks, the women, the guns, the women. <laughs> you have to change your voice. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, a little women. No state income tax. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm fucking moving. That's it. Fucking like Dean's looking at places to rent. Are you looking at places? Maybe. I actually was thinking about renting. I think it's easier than just trying to get my visa and buy and all this shit. I think I might just rent a place for a couple months. Yeah, earlier. that's what we've been talking I'll about. I'll buy a place and you rent it off me. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not giving you... Like, that's what not- Hunter said. He goes, if you buy a place out here, he goes, we'll pretty much rent it all year round. He goes, we'll have... A f- Why don't you yeah. buy a place and I'll rent it from you, but you're not making a profit off me. I'll just pay the mortgage. I'll just tell you what the mortgage is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but deal. 4000 Deal. <laughs> it's a big mortgage. <laughs> Bad credit. Uh, who made the most impressive progress this year? <clears throat> Hunter Labrador. You're looking right at me. <laughs> I'm looking for an answer. You're sitting there. I don't know. Let's go through I'm the list. <clears throat> are we talk, are we, let's just what? Top, top, top 10 of the matter, just When you look at everybody. The whole landscape of bodybuilding. Yeah. I think... Hunter's put on a bunch of size. Nick's put on a Nick's bunch of size. Nick's put on a bunch of size. Samson's put Samson. on Samson is, is Samson's bizarre yet. how much bigger he is. Samson's yet to be seen. Though. Yeah. I think Samson looks amazing. Yes. I want to see what it looks like on stage. Yes. I'm excited to see what Derek looks like with no weight cap. That's Derek. Yeah. Derek. That's crazy. Uh, Tonio is always on my mind. Yeah. He did an opener to 12. Open it open. He won an open. No, I know he won open. Is no, he doing he open or 212? When he won Reno. I don't think he can do 212. He can't make it. Oh, he didn't qualify. He didn't for qualify. And he's oh, way too okay, big. Okay, just open. He's open. way yeah. too big now. Yeah. He, he impressed me a lot. Fuck, he, he has great good. shape. Yeah. He was like peaked perfectly. I think. Oh, God, I don't want to put his. I, I don't think we up. have. I don't think we're going to have that answer until the I interview. think Tonio is a slightly narrow club across his club. I agree with that. I agree with that. That's where I see him limiting himself. Charles Griffin's made a ton of progress. Charles Griffin made a ton of progress, and his posing has accentuated that progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Samson, to me, could be the biggest, the most improved if he can hold the size he had and keep it on stage with condition. Right. Especially considering his last show was March. That's what I'm saying. Because if you say you had the equation because you had... Like a whole year. Not a whole year. October. Yeah. yeah. He did a show in between that. So if he manages to go up from even then, that's impressive. Well, and that's the same thing. You know, that same thought process would go for Derek. Why? Because Why? Derek, Derek had a whole year as well. Oh, yeah. Right? From the, the Olympia last year. Yeah. yeah. Derek Lunsford. Yeah, I know. What would you mean? I didn't go. No, no, I'm saying Samson's had a shorter period of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So, Sam, so Samson's would be the most impressive yeah, if yeah. he holds it. I know that. That's what I'm saying. it's the shortest time. Because we said Derek is impressive, but yeah. we're he, has, all, he has also had a whole year. Yeah, and Nick, Nick had a whole, whole year. year. Do you yeah, have yeah. any numbers on Samson? What he's tracking body weight wise? <laughs> if you don't asked, mind me asking. No, right? I just haven't, yeah. asked, I haven't asked him recently. I know he was, what, 280 at the Arnold, right? Yeah. Low 280s, like 280, 281, something like that. He weighs so much. It's got to be his quads. 
No, he's six. He's like my height. He's also taller. Yeah. He's also okay. taller. Yeah. yeah. He's also yeah. got legs for arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, his arms are. They're obscene and triceps. They're obscene. Dean's the one that's seen him most recently because they trained for wow, the Arnold. That's right. right. That's yeah, right. A couple that. months ago. Yeah. Yep. How fucking big is that man in person? I remember seeing him at y'all's Arnold shoot at American Barbell, just like staring at his triceps, just like. Yeah. Well, remember we trained in what was that? What was that in June? July? In Texas. It was June or July, we trained. Yeah. yeah. He was at his peak. He was Fuck. like 330 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he was insane. He trained with him like eight weeks after that. Yeah. And he was yeah. even bigger, right? Yeah. yeah. He's I, this off. is what I'm saying. I think if he can hold that muscle, then I think in, in the short period of time that he did it, I think he would be the most improved. Because we're going to have to do the RBP awards this year. So we're going to have to narrow this yeah. down. He's good at posing as well. Oh, He's I mean. best. Yeah, there's... Not many better, if Samson, anybody better. I think Samson might be the best poser in the, in the open, open, in the open yeah, class. I agree. Guys Hunter's right. right. Yeah, yeah Hunter's a phenomenal player. Sitting that guy and fuck No, no, I'm not, I'm not. Listen, of course. Very different styles. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. different styles. Samson poses very well. I've always yeah. been impressed with him. Yeah. Um, I feel like Samson's transitions are better than his actual poses. His transitions are very well. Like as in... They're very good. I don't, I don't yeah, mean yeah. to say his poses are bad. What I mean to say is, it's the transitions that pull me into watching him yes. when he's on stage. Yeah, that's what, we were, that's what I was trying to And that's what I was saying. It's not just a case of going and hitting a, hitting the front double. Yeah. It's the, how he moves from the front double into the front last bit or whatever. Yeah. That's how he moves. I like how he moves. Yeah, well, I mean, you saw it firsthand with Dean. Yesterday's posing practice versus today's posing practice. He looks like a totally different bodybuilder. Yeah. So, yeah. If you could train one body part for the rest of your life... What would it be, and why? My back, because <laughs> yeah, my needs. Me too. If, <laughs> if I had to <laughs> answer <laughs> that question, these must. Yeah, right, right, right yeah, right must. here with you. But also, I, I like training back. But let's just say, for even like health and longevity purposes, we can deadlift and we can train our backs. Yeah. I think that that would be the one to choose. Actually, you think legs? No, no. I was going to say because if you could deadlift, you're training your legs anyway. Yeah. And so you, I kind of, yeah. You're that's gonna, kind of you're that. Gonna get that's some quad. Good. You're gonna get some hamstring in there. Yep. You're probably gonna work the most muscles with back for mm-hmm. sure. Back and even control those negatives and just use your pecs. Anyway, I don't know if it works like that, but <laughs> <laughs> super sloppy, terrible I for him. So you can really hit the biceps <laughs> at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> back, back, legs. Yeah. Dean. Legs. Legs. Yeah. <laughs> Chest. Yeah, but I feel enough training legs. Yeah. That's the retired bodybuilder answer. <laughs> or oh, arms. Arms is the next one, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, what's the easiest? Yeah. Um, no, we already asked that. For the fellows who are coaching clients <clears throat> online or face to face, has having your own coach influence changed any of your approaches to your own clients, whether that be nutrition or training protocols? Any standout coaches that contributed to this? Yeah. I'm, a collective. I'm yeah. a collective of every. If any coach I've says no to that question, they're both an idiot and a liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, like, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a collective of every coach I've ever worked with, but the most prominent one will be Patrick, um, which I made no bones about. Um, and I actually think the most important thing that Patrick has taught me was not the X's and the O's. I think how he holds himself and condu- conducts himself and how he views bodybuilding is the, the biggest influence I've had from him. Okay. And, and his ability to stay calm and analyze. That's where he's influenced me enormously. Okay. And mindset. Patrick told me a lot about get the athlete's mind. Like, yeah. be, that's why I'm down here. I don't not because like he talk, told me to come down here, but because he said where the, you know it's the where the mind goes, the body will follow. Does Patrick actually take time to get into the body, to, to the athlete's mind though? Oh yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't work long enough with him to find that out. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> like no, you work, what you mean like ten days? No, <laughs> yeah, ten days. Yeah, wasn't no, enough. no, no. Yeah, he didn't want to get invested. Sent me a diet. I didn't really like it. <laughs> no, no. He, he's very <laughs> hands on and very. He's very intuitive and. And can sense things when things aren't right, and he'll he'll call you and be like, "Something's not right." McDonald's. Mm-hmm. 
We had <laughs> conflicting. Tr- we had conflicting ideas about nutrition. <laughs> yeah, you picked the worst coach for your mindset yeah, possible. No. That's why it only lasted ten days. Yeah, literally ten <laughs> days. I was actually in the hospital when Finney was getting bo- born and you were calling me about it. But I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, I'm like, no. yeah, my baby's been born. i got to go. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on. He said no McDonald's, man. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, he's prescribing McDonald's now. So who was right? No, not anymore. You know, I'm not getting any McDonald's. Only because I tasted it the other day and it was absolute garbage. Who says that? You like you don't like McDonald's either, do you? It is the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. It's garbage. Yeah, the fact that he says garbage that way tells you <laughs> it's not the one to listen to no. about McDonald's. It's not garbage. <laughs> Fucking it is delicious. I, I took, don't know. I took a bite and I went. I'm not. Quite a bit. I took a bite and I went. I am not eating the rest of that shit. He's like, I'm making oats. So bad, he didn't want to feed it to me. <laughs> yeah. no, I went and smashed ice cream instead and a milkshake instead. I wasn't worried about eating junk. You did, just, yeah, that you was did make a fucking horrible. Yeah. That was so bad. Nah, it was pretty good. They're starving kids on the other side of the table, Ben. Careful. Oh, wait. This fat <laughs> yeah. fucker ate it. Don't worry about that. Yeah, it all got eaten. I ate all of it. Uh, How many burgers do you have? Two. No, three. Fuck you, two. Two uh, Big To start Macs. with. How many nuggets? <laughs> two, two Big Macs. Cheeseburger. Two wait, wait, wait. Okay, so start. Do the actual breakdown. You did two chicken? chicken sandwiches. I did two Big Macs, a cheeseburger, a McChicken. 20 McNuggets. <laughs> fries. I only ate some of the fries. Oh. Yeah. And uh, half of that tub ice cream. Half a tub ice cream. It's not that much. No. It, I mean, it's like 3,000 calories. Dude, I'd weigh 330 pounds if I could eat like Maybe that. that's what you need. Maybe he needs an eating coach. Both these two. <laughs> both of these two need an eating coach. All right. I'll see you in the off season. Yeah. You can stay at my house. I'll put some size on you. We had this huge family size. You're not going to Fuad's. Fuck no. 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 Talking about He'll come back as an open bodybuilder. Yeah. He said, no, we're not doing that until he wins the 212. We were, we were watching a movie Doritos. last night, and we have this big bag of Doritos. No, it wasn't. Two a, of them. Listen, a it's a fucking family-sized bag of Doritos. Big bag of Doritos. He goes, let's eat some chips and watch the movie. I said, yeah, perfect. And he's like, get your own fucking bag of chips. <laughs> I said, Jesus, it's a fucking family size. It's this goddamn big. It's huge. He says, I'm going to eat them all. <laughs> I, okay. So I open up a family size bag of chips. I have like 12 chips. He eats the whole bag. <laughs> He's just sitting there like this. You literally said the other day that when you eat during a film, you want to be able to eat during the whole I'm film. I'm telling you, we, the first <laughs> hour of the movie, the all, I heard, all I heard is him crunching a chip the whole that first hour months. of the movie. <laughs> okay. Well, wait, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Tell them what you said. Tell them what you said about 15 minutes after we, were, we started watching the movie. I was like, I'm glad we both have our own bag of chips. Because <laughs> we just both had them in our laps. We're just like this. I ate quite a bit of chips. I ate way more chips than I would have had I not had my own bag. See? Right. See, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> You'd have limited my intake. But the worst thing that about you is you were like, oh, I'm not. Like, I ate that big mango. I took one bite and I went, I don't like that, so I'm not going to eat it. You were like, oh, this is horrible. No. I, <laughs> you ate the vanilla ice cream. You're like, I don't like vanilla ice cream, but yeah, I'm going to finish it. Ice cream whilst eating it. I think it's boring. It's not that I don't like it. <laughs> but you damn well finished it. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. I liked it. Dean, what do you prefer? Fucking or making love? <laughs> it's a pretty serious question. Fucking. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't had any in like two months, so he's fucking. He wants to fuck. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it, do, do you guys prefer making love? Oh yeah, for sure. I want to kiss. Remember? remember yeah, I want to kiss. Episode. I have to make out. He says. <laughs> I like kissing. I have to kiss. Episode. I, yeah. I like. I like kissing. I'm a good kisser. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Who told you you're a good kisser? His you wife. don't want me to answer How do you that. Know that? <laughs> <laughs> Whose wife? <laughs> How do, you, how do you know that? How do you know you're a good kisser? Because <laughs> somebody told you? Because they put it on pause. They go, you are so good at this. <laughs> no, I always wondered that. So, like, somebody told you, but then the next person kisses differently. So what the fuck? You can tell when you kiss a girl and she enjoys it, man. That's how I know you're a bad kisser. I probably am a bad kisser. I, yeah. I don't care about kissing. It's useless. Right? It's useless. It is. You just kiss her titties. You're wrong. You just kiss <laughs> <laughs> You literally just kiss to get to the next thing. Yeah, you kiss the titties, you kiss See, the that, pussy. See, that's where I know you're a bad kisser. I kiss to get to the next step. Yeah, that's how I know you're bad. Well, I don't kiss because I enjoy it. Exactly. Well, 
Who enjoys you well, it? Everyone, like if you well. enjoy something, you're better at it. <laughs> yeah. Do you kiss because you like it? Fuck no. I don't know. Think about, seriously, think about, it for, think about it before you answer. Do you kiss your old lady because you want to kiss her? Or do you kiss your old lady because you want to kiss her? Wait, but hang on. In England, old, no, hang on. In England, old lady means mum. Okay, so no, okay, no, right. Do you kiss your woman because you want to kiss her? And I'm talking about majority of the time. I'm not talking about off and on. Because I know she's going to watch this. I'm, you still have to ask, uh, answer awesome. honestly. Just deal with it. So Just deal with it. <laughs> do you kiss her because you want to kiss her? Or do you kiss her because you know you're going to go somewhere else after? Both. Which Both. one more often? Don't fucking lie, Dean. You fucking son of a bitch. Fucking son of a bitch. Yo, kissing, kissing is typically the, the catalyst yes. for getting, right? yeah, yeah, for Not sure. For he just wants to kiss. It depends, it. It, depends so if I, it, wait, it depends if I've got to leave a tip at the end, because if I do, I'm not kissing it. <laughs> let, me ask you, let me ask you this. Do you ever kiss and then just stop after? And you're like, okay, I'm good. I'm no, because the kissing really ramps me up. So, it leads so then to I'm good else. to fucking go. Yeah, but you're kissing to go somewhere. Yeah, but it gets her going too. But you're like kissing it. to lead somewhere. Mm-hmm. You're not kissing just to kiss. Oh, well, yeah, but. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It's useless. But it's important. No, it's, it's not useless. No. Oh, see, and that's why. That's why. Enjoyable foreplay to both Come would be on, the man. proper description in that scenario. There's way more enjoyable foreplay. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> yeah, like blowjobs, dude. Come on. Hey, hey, <laughs> fuck. No. Fuad, hey, Fuad fucks like he trains. Come on, let's get a move on. I'm falling asleep. Fucking go. Get down there. <laughs> Come on, man. Just get on with this shit. <laughs> Cedric said that to me one time. Yeah. <laughs> Cedric said to me once, he's like, you don't have to fuck in the gym. He's like, you can make love. And he's like, I'll train in slow and shit. I'm like, I can't fucking do that, man. I just want to fuck. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking horny, Cedric. Let me fuck. Because he's, he's a man. Yeah. Man. So this is what men do. Yeah, man, this is what, what men do. Men fuck. Right. Men don't kiss. <laughs> men do kiss. Um, what do you love the most about bodybuilding, Hunter? What do I love the most? The about? absolute most. You have to pick one thing. Or someone else if they have a That's training. The training, man. I love, I fucking love training. Okay. That's fair. Even though it's boring, I intentionally make it boring because I love it. I love it too much. I'm afraid, like, if I It'll make end. it less boring, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to end. So you right. make it drag so make on. It, yeah. So when I do a rap, I'm like, <laughs> I can love this. I love off season training setting. Yeah. That's your favorite. Like when it's like food's normal, it's me versus me, it's me versus my logbook when I step in the gym. Mm-hmm. Dude. Very much yeah. so like an OCD sense and order person and it just all makes sense when it's like that and everything clicks. Yeah. I, I like um, right right now, like in a prep setting, especially at the end, it's uh you know, very much so addicting, you know, like see the daily changes. Yeah. And you know, it's like when they start building up and picking up, you know, it makes it like, Okay, let's see how much fucking harder we can push. That feeling's pretty addicting. How hard is it to enjoy bodybuilding when you're most love of it is ordering around the logbook because what i'm saying is like if you're somebody like jp like when i when i did a podcast with jp he said that his training sessions were based on a logbook and he had to beat it even if it was one pound and i'm like well when you're in prep and you can't necessarily do that because you're running low calories and cardio or whatever what replaces that love if you can't destroy your logbook? there's every week? there's a point in a prep where matching is winning and to me, I don't know about you, I get to that point where I'm matching my logbook and I'm equally satisfied. Like if I'm three weeks out and I'm still matching shit where I was five weeks out, I feel like I'm What winning. if you're not? What does that mean? That happens, and sometimes you just got to taper back. You got to pull back. Up the you know? It's still a game. You know what I mean? What'd you say? Up the halo. <laughs> That's a fair statement. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. It would work. That would help. That's a way to draw. Yeah. Fucking helps. <laughs> No, seriously. If your if your main love is like seeing the logbook change, and then you can't anymore because your focus is different, mm-hmm. do you replace that love with something? Or I you think just that's like, kind of why I specified, you know, like in an off season food high setting, yeah, this yeah. is what I like, and then you know, like right now, like because if you would ask me two preps ago, I'd have been like, oh, I you know fucking hate most about it inside of like six seven weeks. I don't get to train that one. I'm starving. Da, 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 da. And you know, one of my big things this year was. You know, I guess last year starting, because I did two shows last year, I found myself really guilty of just, you know, like, 
counting days, not yeah. making days count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, like, especially, you know, as I've gotten older, I got married, I have my daughter. Like, I don't want to, you know, like, have, like, entire three-month blocks of my life, just, like, one big fuzzy yeah. starving cardio <laughs> period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I've done, you know, a lot better job of, like, shifting the focus and finding the enjoyment and what I can find the enjoyment in. You know, is it the ultimate, like, pent-ultimate bodybuilding experience to me? No, that's what I do in the off-season, but... You know, like right now I derive a lot of satisfaction from, you know, like watching the change and, you know, just handling business. Yeah. What about you? What best thing about bodybuilding? Your absolute favorite thing about bodybuilding. It might sound a bit weird, but meeting new people because I'm not massively outgoing yeah. and um, like meeting all you guys and everything is just. Well, that's important. Yeah. That's great. I could say that. Me and, like, me and Justin went for a ride today. The experiences that have come yeah. from bodybuilding yeah. by yeah. far, like, Absolutely. the actual best part, for okay. sure. Yeah, for sure. But, you know that a lot of those experiences are centered around and the and training. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Sorry, say that again. It a lot easier because everyone's, you know, on the same page. Like-minded individuals. A lot of the best days of my life have happened with people like the ones that are sitting at this table and have centered around like smashing a training session at a cool gym and then getting food getting yeah. food, and yes, then sir. hanging yeah. out and just growing out. That's, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah. that's ideal day. To yeah. Me. That's awesome. Yeah. Ben. Um, um, I don't know if I can pin it down. I don't know if I can give you a, a one answer. I know what the, I know the period of 10 weeks out to four weeks out are my favorite, I think, on a personal level. Okay. Yeah. That's where I find out who I am. That's From where 10 I, weeks out to four weeks out? I guess. Or oh. well, four to, four to uh, 10 to two, I would say. Because yeah. I've really had to, I mean, we've been in conversation, I've been dark, like, I've had to really fucking graft to get in shape. <laughs> and I love that challenge. Like, uh, I, I grew up doing that, like, with it, whether it's football, you guys call it soccer, but I would choose to get home and do extra training. Like that was, I was very self motivated, however you want to call it. So I enjoy going, this is where I've been. I'm going to go here. Yeah. I'm going to go further and dig and go and go and go until I end up in the hospital. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah. I don't know. I, di I don't have an off switch. Yeah, and I, I enjoy finding that out that my mental capacity exceeds my physical capacity. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I get great satisfaction from that. Even if it doesn't play out to the end look, I still take a win being like, oh, you're a bit fucked up in the head. <laughs> it's, a it's a detriment to your look. But I, I don't Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I, I, I didn't, it didn't fulfill the look on stage, but fuck me, the, the character that I know that I had in those it's so moments. Stupid, it's so, oh, it's so fucking retarded. Yeah. yeah John used to say that to me. John used to say you, you're, you used to be like, you're your own. <coughs> yeah. yeah. You, he's like, you do more than you have to. And that's why you're not looking as good as you want yeah. to. 100%. Yeah. I think I, I thought, I thought I loved bodybuilding, but I think I realized I don't love bodybuilding. I love what it's about, which is. I don't think there's another thing that I could have picked in life that would have suited me that would challenge me the way it does. Yeah. It's like I told you the other day, we were talking about self-mastery. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about bodybuilding. It's like you have to go against all sense. of the things that you want to do and be like, well, I want to do those things, but they're not going to fucking help me. So I got to master your mind, whether it's about eating, whether it's about training, whether it's about pushing past barriers. <laughs> So, yeah, just self-mastery is, <clears throat> I don't think there's another, I don't know if there's another endeavor that requires oh. physical and mental combination. I would say you did, like, MMA. Well, fighting is, fighting is very is fucking close yeah. because you, those guys are all making, work. like, most sports, their game day, they're prime. They're fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Our sport is like you're you're fucking the lower the calories, depleted the more work, and yeah. whatever. And yeah. the same with the UFC, they're they're down and or and not UFC, but MMA Just and fight, then fighters in general. Yeah. yeah, any like combat sports basically. If you're making weight and depleting and dehydrating, that like that's it's a, it's a very similar parallel. I feel. Yeah, 
I guess there's other things too. I mean, like long distance runners and shit. Like you really yeah, have oh, to yeah. be able to tap into yeah. something that's going to keep you. But that series you put me on the Idris Elba one, that's and they cool. do that marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's six marathons in six days in 140 degree heat. Yeah. And that yeah. woman was cramping so bad she was like sobbing and like crying, screaming, like yeah. screaming, yeah. Yeah. almost like asking them to cut her leg off because it yeah. was so bad. Yeah. yeah. No, I just I, I I took it. I take it back because I was thinking. I remember when I was doing. A little bit of jogging there. I was watching some of those marathon runs, like, oh. and I was like, "Holy fuck, yeah, man!" These fucking people, ultra runners are, are hardcore, you know, like motherfuckers. 100, 100 miles in a, yeah. in a day or whatever. No, bodybuilding's the hardest though. <laughs> <laughs> With the most. No, th- yeah. I think the I think the value just comes in, in but I said, intentionally but I, but choosing. I, but I specifically something said, difficult. I specifically said it was something I could do. Yeah, that. Because there's nothing else in my life I, I yeah, could be good at. That better would, suited for yourself. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. combine those things. I think humans are very good at challenging themselves, putting themselves in. It seems like there's a... I think humans have become very good at not challenging themselves, and I think that's the problem. No, I think there's a small section of people that are inquisitive and want to challenge. Like, you'll see yes. like that 14 peaks where the guy will climb those 14 mountains. Like, that's the psychology that I can really, like, connect with and and inspires me and I think that's I people, like people do that shit because they don't have to struggle in life as much anymore people, yeah, yeah people finding look, they're trying to find people something look for struggles yeah. somewhere else yeah I think the, I think the human psyche does better under stress and struggle yeah I don't think there's anything more valuable than I think our life right now is the easiest life I mean mm-hmm. for, for I know there's people in third world countries but say in North America and Europe we, we have the most comfortable life you could imagine right now mm-hmm. so um, craziest thing you would do for five hundred dollars million or five hundred dollars five hundred dollars five hundred million five hundred million dollars tax free? It, it wouldn't be anything crazy. It would all be justified. I would do almost anything. That's what I mean. It would all make sense because I bet it's half a billion million. dollars. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing I would do, and you bet you're crazy, and I go, yeah, but it's for five hundred mil, and you bet. <laughs> all right. Is there anything you wouldn't do? Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, cut your dick off. I wouldn't. Hurt or harm or kill any of my friends or family. What are we? Maybe a few people I'd kill in my friends and family circle. <laughs> or, half, or half a billion. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Is there anything you wouldn't do? Oh, I don't know that. Like I just said, I don't think I'd cut my dick off. Would you? I don't think I would. No. Really? Million. You would cut your dick off. Yeah. I wouldn't. If I could find no. a surgeon, I could pay a pretty good surgeon maybe for a prosthetic. Yeah. Maybe so your dick, take a million bucks, have it sewn back on, and sell four hundred ninety nine left over. <laughs> get a donor dick. Get a, donor get a way dick. better dick. I got this I, black you, dick. I got a million. <laughs> I got a million dollar dick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> look at this thing. The completely different yes. color. <laughs> <laughs> I got it on. A, I got it like this. I can do it. This okay, but seriously, let's say you weren't allowed to sew it back on. Did you get an innie? No, you know, no, you just fucked. Mm. It's like a, you're, like, a, good, you're yeah. like a Ken doll. It's just a piece of skin. Mm. Oh, you look like Marilyn Manson on that cover. Yeah, it's just a. That's it. But you're rich as fuck. You're very Dean? rich. I would not cut my dick off. No, I wouldn't cut my dick off. Well, for an Olympia win, I wouldn't cut no. my dick off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like yes, no, <laughs> for forty it. grand. No, <laughs> I said no. Just making sure. Quit trying to get me you? to cut my dick off, dude. What about you? I think I might. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it this, depends. At this, sta- at this stage yeah. in your life, your dick's hardly useful. My dick works all fucking great. It's, a dust, it's a dust flap at best. Come <laughs> on, man. I use it every day. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah, peeing. It's a, a cover the dust. <laughs> every day I pee with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that's important. If I'm like 50, 60, give me that money. I'm cutting this fucking thing off. It's caused, me, it's caused me enough 60, heartache. It's coming off. <laughs> right. There's, a, yeah. there's an age. How do you deal with post show depression? That's a real thing. That's it is. Real. It is. But I don't know. I always find at the back, a back end of a contest prep, I'm so fucking fired up and excited to progress. I don't really experience that. <sighs> don't let your routine go to absolute hell in what? like three days. Well, like you did last year. That's <laughs> been my experience, yeah. You went on holiday and had Explain the worst Explain your time disdain ever. here. I want to hear this. It's just so fucking... Well, are you not excited to progress after you it's get... such a fucking cartoony answer. I'm so excited to work out again. I don't care. It's like, come on, man. People get depressed. A super, yeah, no, I'm just saying, for me, per- super for me personally, yeah. Fuad. It's a super high fucking moment, and then there's nothing. You know what you say to me all the time? You go, you just like to argue. 
argue. I do you like to argue. argue. I love to argue. That's why this does show Everything I say. That's why you said at the gym the other day, you're like, you just like to argue. I was like, you fucking picked that fight with me. I go, yeah, I did. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah, you know what you yeah. do for a living, right, my good sir? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dean, post show depression. You ever had it? Yeah, I've had it. And? How do you get out of it? How do you, how did you work through it? Lots of food. You ate your way through it. Fair enough. I'm joking. That's what I, I, that's I, what I, I did. I think him and him have the same answer. Yeah. Just excited yeah. to get started? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's normal. Like, I'm, okay, I'm not saying that's wrong. I would finish a show. I'd be back in the gym. If not the Sunday, the Monday, I'm back in the gym. So it's not that I didn't want to get back to work or get started, but yeah. there's still a difference. Imagine if you did, like, really wanted to be a good bodybuilder. Yeah, I know. My genetics were so good, Imagine. I barely had to when try. I lost the British finals in 2017. Huh? When I lost the British finals as a junior in 2017, came back, won the overall the year after. Yeah. You had depression after the... Yeah. After 2017 finals. After the loss? It hit me quite bad. And then I thought, stop being a bitch and just drain harder. <laughs> and it worked. I've heard of bodybuilders are having push your depression off the wins too which is a very real I thing. was going to say it's it's, it's really not, yeah all the time all the time Hunter I wasn't uh, oh sorry no, yeah. yeah my bad yeah well it's not because it's a it's not necessarily it's, because it's, it's a winner climax. yeah it's not necessarily because you won or lost it's because yeah. you had all this stuff going on you were yeah. really busy you were really focused mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's just gone and it's a routine like right. Hunter that's what Hunter was saying it's a routine like you a lot of people get more like grooved into a schedule in prep yeah, you I go think. from, I am waking up at this time, doing my cardio, coming home, eating this. I have the same six meals every day. I'm training at the same time yeah. every day. I'm doing everything the same, too. Yeah. I can sleep in if I want. Yeah, or and and I can eat what I want. Yeah, plus the, plus the support system. Like, your friends are all calling you. Are you okay? You want some help? You want your family supporting you? Then all of a sudden, the show's over, and, like, kind of people just go Even off. Even something as simple as social media, you have so much engagement and support, and then yeah. out of nowhere... No one gives a fuck. That's right. But I never had that. All my preps was always very insular. Very, I didn't, I mean, the opposite of how you conduct. Like, it was Luke and I, but, like, it was very much like a, no, no, I, on my own. But no, was, no one was calling me, like, hey, how are you doing? No, but it was Luke and you. You are training together. So you had yeah. someone there. Yeah, but I didn't have a bunch of people who were like, hey, how's everything going? I didn't have a bunch of people either, but even if you just have Paul, right? Or even if my brother would call me or my mom. I saw my mom once in a while, and she was like, is your... You doing okay? Like that's yeah. Because they're 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 waiting to see how you do. When's your show? How's it gonna go? Are you doing okay? Are you gonna win? Then your show's done. Nobody fucking gives a shit no more. And like you said, social media wise too, mm -hmm. your engagement goes up. Everybody's watching. Show's over, and you're like, engagement takes a tank because like nobody gives a shit about your recovery or rehab or whatever it is. Your nobody wants to watch you progressively yeah. get fat. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's why people started doing reverse dieting because it kept them. <laughs> That's the whole. That reason. was the only reason. I mean, I'm not sure. That's the whole reason. I'm not it. sure. Yeah. That's why. That's the whole reason. Nobody, sure. nobody wants to reverse diet. It's just fucking. They just do it so they still have something to do. Still have a plan. That is all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I learn something new every day between you. See, you should hang out with me more. I teach you everything. I tried to hang out with you more this week, but you, you were too busy for me. Which way should metal plates be facing? Oh, that's a good one. Inside. In. All yes. in. Yes. All in. Thank God. Thank God. See, we all agree. Yeah. yeah. UK is all out. Get off the table. Get it wasn't. Yeah, Luke and I go in. Did you? All out. There's no hand holes if you go out. Okay. You gotta hold the the lip. The yeah. lip. And the lip goes in, so you can hold it. Ooh, bunch of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? It's <laughs> been so quiet. It's <laughs> been so quiet all week. Grass. I didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> Just put a fucking plate on. Uh, <laughs> He's as blue collar of a bodybuilder as you're mm -hmm. ever gonna meet. Just put the fucking weight on and let's lift. Who in the podcast has the fastest car? Justin, I think. Currently, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, I didn't yeah, have a six. Sorry, I think you have a Corvette. Gone. Oh, oh what well, he, he's got a sting. BMW yeah. is faster. Is. I don't know. I don't know what he's got. I just know he's a got stinger. He's got a stinger. stinger. Yeah. He's got a X five M competition. <laughs> <laughs> the, you have to say the competition part. He gets mad. Yeah, he gets really yeah, upset. Yeah. Really upset. Honestly, he said it one time without the competition, and I cried. <laughs> he did cry. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the biggest UFC UFC fighter that you could take in each fight in a fight, and who would 
Would you win? Who were y'all talking about? Weren't y'all talking about fighting the women? And we watched him at parents' that. house. You, uh, yeah. Spaza. I still think no I'd way. get pieced up by wow. a girl, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Street fight setting, I'd go for the bear hug and pray for the best. Look, Octagon there's a, there's setting, a, I think I might uh, get pieced uh, up by there, a girl. There's a, there's a reason why there's weight classes. Weight fucking matters. Especially early on in a fight. How much weight do you have to have? I don't, I don't think you can contextualize that, but weight definitely matters. I mean, like, Look, we'll put it this way: in the UFC, ten pounds matters. If you choke that bitch for sure. Ten pounds matters. No, I know that, but they're all technically proficient. So yeah, fighting, so this is a level playing field. Yeah. So weight fucking really matters. Yeah, yeah of course. So, so if it's not a level playing field, then what? Ben likes being choked. I don't know. I guess maybe like thirty or forty. Like, pounds. could you beat up a lightweight? I believe so. Really. In a straight in a straight street fight, if I get a job done early enough, yeah, I'm two seventy. Yeah, so you they'd have a hard time so dealing could, with, and I'm and I'm I'm relatively strong. So you could beat up like, like and I'm juiced. We're taking me literally as I am. So you could take like <laughs> Dustin Poirier. You like you're not even juiced at the moment, bro. No, but you know what I mean. Like I'm, I lift. Yeah. Like I got some power still. I can still move some weight. Yeah. 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 Do you think you take Dustin Poirier? No. You could I think you could. And kick you really think? Chest. And you ran at him and fucking put one on him. He's having a hard time with you. Yeah. You think so? Look, there was, a prof- there was a professional boxer in the gym Luke and I used to train at. I think and so. he was at like 160, 170. And, we were, and Luke, Luke was walking around at 300 pounds. And he was like, man, if I, didn't, if I could survive a minute, then maybe, but fuck that yeah. minute. Yeah, I agree. Fuck that minute. But I think yeah. a, a boxing is different than MMA. Yeah, no, I'm, I, he made a fight. He was a professional boxer, but he was talking about a fight. Yeah. And he was like, fuck it, man. He goes, there's so much size there. You don't realize. Some of these guys are really light, aren't they? You think? So, look, if, if you, you could, if you, you could rag all these fuckers. So strong, though. Like, I don't know, like, in high school, like, college, like, I'd come home and, like, I had a couple friends who did jujitsu, and, like, the guy that taught them was, like, you know, like, a decent world level guy, and the dude weighed, like, 170 pounds, and I was, like, 230, 240 at the time. Yeah. I swear to God, it felt like he weighed, like, 300 yeah. pounds lying on top of me. I, and, like, yeah. It's wild. Yeah, it's but, wild. but, but, yeah. He, that was, he'd have to get you down. Yeah. Right? You'd have to put you there. And I think if you've got 100 pounds, I, I'm, 100 pounds is a fucking lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Look, if I'm, if I got in a cage with someone that was... You're like trying to convince me. I no, no, know. I'm talking. I'm not talking. I'm just looking oh, at you. Okay. Like, I'm just saying, if I got in a cage with a middleweight, I think I'd get pieced the fuck up real quick. Yeah. But I do think there's a drop off. And at some point, I'm too big for them to have, like, yeah. size fucking matters. And the, yeah. the earlier it is, the worse it is for them. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to say no for me. I don't, I don't think I can beat up a lightweight. I don't even think I can beat up a bantamweight. That's what they do for, that's what they do for a fucking living, man. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's what they do for Very a fucking proficient. living. No, I, I mean, it would be like, I'd have to try and crack them early and get them out of there. I mean, you're talking about like, what's the fucking guy's name? The, the little black guy that got removed from the UFC. Removed from the UFC. Not removed. Like he, he, his contract was up and they let him go. It starts with a D. He's a bantamweight. He was a champion. Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson. Mm-hmm. So you think... Oh, come on. No, you... T- <laughs> <laughs> He's like 130 soaking wet. So you think no problem. You'd- yeah. I still think... 130 pounds is a very small person. I do, but he's like the best in the world. Yeah, I know. Or was know. the yeah, best in the world. Sure. Like you're talking about the best fighter in the world. Yeah, in certain positions, but I'm saying if you're, other both stood, if you're both stood there in a st- in a street fight, he's probably going to go. Oh, I don't really want to. Even though I'm world champion, that's a big dude. I don't think so. I think he's going to jump on your back and choke you the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, it's totally yeah, possible. If he can get there, I'm going out. Yeah. But I'm, I'm probably going to try and not let him get on my bomb back. right on my back. Yeah. Remember, remember what you said to me today about soup, uh, about sport bikes and Harley's. Yeah, and you said how those sport bikes were like. No, hands down, like way faster. Yeah, like not even close. Yeah, I feel that way about a professional fighter versus just a dude, like a big dude. Yeah, yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just gonna, get, sure. you're just gonna get fucked. But up. if you have, if you have a foundation of martial arts training or fight training, well, yeah, you have some technique. If, if that, that that'll bridge you a long. Yeah. Okay, well, way. I don't have that background, so if I'm you're just a big dude. Then you're probably yeah. gonna get beaten up. I did yeah. kung fu. I had a <laughs> orange belt. 
Did you do? No, I got I a green belt. Bruce, I, two I watched a Bruce Lee film one time. You did you do kung fu, fu for real, <laughs> dude? Yeah, dog. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, I can show you photos. I did a kata oh, tournament and everything. Bruce. What belt? What belt are you? I was a green belt with two stripes. What's green? How far is green from black? I think it goes white, yellow, maybe right to green. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. I was like a, I was like 12. Dude. I did it for like three years, but I was just a kid. I think for the most part, they kid the shower, most of us, but I do say there is a weight, a weight fucking matters. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Okay. And you know, 130 pound dude like jumps on you. I feel like you could just fucking throw that little fucker yeah, off you. Yeah, it depends if they get the trick <clears throat> on lock straight away or not. If not, then that's I just, fucked. Yeah. If you tuck your chin and fucking roll in and then stamp on their head, fuck. Stamp on their head. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You guys make it, I just don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'll speak for myself. Yeah, no, I, I think I'd get my ass whipped. I'm not. Do you wear your socks first or last when getting dressed? Do you put Lost. them on? Lost. Yeah, when do you put them on first or last? I usually put them on because I don't like pulling my fucking pants up to my knees and yeah. then putting them on then pulling the pants over last? my knees. Yeah. Really? No, I'll put it them depends on. Depends how tight the trousers yeah, are wearing. <laughs> if I'm wearing shorts, I, I might not give a shit. But if I'm wearing shorts, they're definitely going on lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always put them on first. If it's cold, then I put them on first. I always put them on first because I'm with him. I don't want to sit down in my jeans and then like have to pull them back up and fix them yeah. and everything. You just said shorts. Shorts. What about pants? If I'm wearing like track Tight pants. Track, pa track pants or yeah. tra soft training, last. If I'm wearing jeans, first. Huh. I thought everybody did it first. Uh, polar bear versus grizzly bear. Hunter. <sighs> grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. The grizzly bear's bigger. Isn't polar bear supposed to be the most I think aggressive? Polar bear? bears are bigger and more aggressive. Yeah. Really? I think they yeah. were. I thought they were mm -hmm. bigger. Look it up. Brown bears are the most aggressive. We don't have the. <laughs> That's not as fun when you can't see it. I think polar bears are the only bears that. Only eat animals, protein, right? Oh, that's not true. I think other bears will graze on berries and shit. Yeah, like berry, berries and honey. Oh, yeah, and yeah, honey. Yeah. We need the poo honey. No, no, yeah. But no. like, but they eat animals. Yeah, of course. Um, oh, okay. But, but I'm saying, like, oh, they only they eat. Only yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, and therefore they're harder. <laughs> it's more gangster. Yeah, yeah. They're more manly because of it. Oh, it's a more manly approach for sure. Fuck you guys. Uh, Fred would be a polar bear. Yes, definitely. Fuad, have you ever considered being a judge? No. Uh, the most memorable, difficult cardio session you've ever had? Oh, actually, oh, yeah. I actually have one. What? When I was fucking. When I had diarrhea for thirty days straight. Oh, that was like because I would ago. do. I was doing an hour and a half of cardio, and every however many long, I would have to go to that bathroom. Okay, here. Bathroom. How about it this? Was in, it was in ninety degree heat. I was on that stairmaster, dripping sweat, and then running oh. to go to the bathroom, coming back, and going. Shh. That was so I've, uh, I, I've Googled this and I've got a website where they gave some key points on grizzly verse. All right, let's hear it. Okay, <laughs> grizzly bears actually don't eat much meat. Okay. Only 10% of their diet is protein while the rest is berries and plants. A polar bear eats almost all meat. Shocking. Polar, polar bears are much larger than grizzlies. Male polar bears weigh an average of 770 to 1,500 pounds. Jeez. The largest subspecies of brown bear, Kodiak bear has an average of 660 to 1320, which is still gigantic, but about a 200 pound disparity. So a study, a study conducted in 2015 found that grizzly bears were more, were dominant when competing with larger polar bears for beached whale carcass. Okay. Mm. So a polar bear would win. Yeah. All right, let's do one more thing and then we're going to go because Hunter looks tired and Dean looks tired. Um, We've been we on for a pose, couple hours. We got pose. I got a pose. pose. Really okay. Last thing. We got about five minutes left. Let's predict eleven to fifteen. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, because everybody is top ten, and I think there's so many fucking good bodybuilders doing eleven fifteen is important. Because it's tough. It's not important. Well, it's not important. Nothing's important. I don't. You know, the world's not going to change based on our predictions first to fifth either. You got the list. But I think it. Uh, no, I don't have a list. Do off the top of our head. We can do off the top of our head. James. There's a lot of people. That's James, Raphael, qualified. Charles Griffin. Blessing. Antoine. I would say I would Rizzo. see I would see Blessing in there. Possibly. James. I, I see James, James in there. In there. Uh, maybe Raphael, yeah. Crizzo. Crizzo. Yeah, Crizzo possibly. Are we forget there's thirty five fucking guys no, who are we forgetting? I see list. Man, I don't know. That's so tough. Patrick. Patrick. 
Um, was it Johnson? Oh, they just did uh, France. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think he'll be in the top. He's, he's pretty fucking hard. But I don't think he's going to have the physique to... I don't think he's going to have the physique to stand with those guys, but I could be wrong. Justin Rodriguez. Rodriguez, yeah. He's a top 10 Olympian. Akeem. Right. Fucking Akeem. Where's Akeem? Akeem. <laughs> Fuck you. Where's Akeem? He's nobody's just, been talking about Akeem. That's right. Look, if Akeem's in... Uh, no, let's not play the if. Qualified. There they are. Holy shit. Yeah, Raphael. Oh. Yeah. Raphael could be in the top. Okay. Three. He could be. He looks uh, Vladislav. Uh, you guys know the Vladislav, right? The guy who just won. Uh, Vlad Suriko. That guy. Yeah, that guy, Suriko. Yeah, yeah, he looks right. hard as nails right now. From Ukraine. Um, huh? yeah. yeah. Yeah, you saw him at the Portugal show, right? Dude, like the crazy second blue to Presti. So Vladislav, Akeem, Antoine, Presti. Um, I don't know who these two guys are. Hassan, Mustafa. Mohammed Shaban. Yeah, Hassan should probably be 10 in that. Mohammed Shaban, uh, awesome. Charles Griffin, Blessing, Joel Thomas, I didn't know he was qualified. Yeah, Angel, so Angel Calderon. Right so Insane. Yeah, so I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. You just read for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, wait. We have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have 20 more guys here. Andrea Muzi, Theo. Uh, I don't think Justin Rodriguez. No, I, Justin like, can, Rodriguez. We, can we say if the point if you qualify on points, they're not going to be in that top fifteen, right? Let's just cover that one, right? Didn't Justin Rodriguez qualify on points? Yeah, yeah. but I don't think he's going to be top fifteen when you consider <coughs> your blessing Hassan Antoine. I don't think I need a list, honestly. I'm just going to say in no order: James, James, Curzo, Blessing, Antoine, Antoine, Hassan, maybe Charles Raphael? Griffin instead. I think Raphael. I. Shit, <laughs> Raphael. Like I said, could get first, could get fifteen. Yeah. yeah, flip a coin, Crazy list. Fl- float them up in the air, and see where they land. Yeah, this is going to take more than five minutes because we're going to sit down and go. Can Raph beat Griffin? Can Raph beat James? Can James beat? I think Raphael is probably the strongest out of all those names you just said. Raphael's one that could be in that top ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's possible. You think? Yeah, his shape's awesome. I just fucking good. I, I know he's really good. I just wonder he how he's going to look. And he's bigger than everyone thinks he is. I know that. I know that. But I wonder if his shape doesn't show the way it, you know, other guys do. Uh, most muscular people up there look pretty fucking. Yeah. Look pretty crazy. Yeah, he's very impressive. All right. Well, we're going to let you guys go because you got to pose. And we've been on for a couple hours. So thank you, Hunter. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Fuad. Thank you, boss. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.